Hello dear students, myself Dr. Madhuri Shrinivas, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video we are going to look at the topic vitiligo which is very very important from exam point of view, entrance and also the prof exams where clinical features, etiology and the treatment all of these are very very important. So I have made similar videos which are helpful for your prof university exams you can check them out i will leave the link for them in the description also in the first comment and these are my sources please do read from these books after the topic is completed so let us begin our discussion with the topic directly so vitiligo please remember students this is a condition where the patients are going to have white colored or depigmented lesions over the body and what is the main etiological factor responsible for vitiligo? It is autoimmunity. Remember, very, very important autoimmunity due to the lymphocytes causing damage and destruction of the melanocytes. There is going to be depigmented lesions over the body. And this is a cell-mediated autoimmune destruction of the melanocytes, which you can remember. And they can also be autoantibodies to the melanin pigment. And remember, melanocyte is the cell which is present in the stratum basal of the epidermis, which will produce the melanin pigment responsible for the color of the skin often it is also associated with other autoimmune conditions like for example type 1 diabetes mellitus Hashimoto's thyroiditis Addison's disease and pernicious anemia this is also very important in the point associations of the vitiligo next coming to the other factors which are responsible even genetics are also associated some genes are also associated with the vitiligo up to 20 to 30 percent of the patients may have some genetic component but remember students this vitiligo is a it is an acquired condition it is an acquired condition lesions are going to be seen initially in the childhood okay but remember this is not going to be present in the patients from birth okay so not from birth very very important point which you need to remember that is congenitally the patient of vitiligo is going to be absolutely normal it is only during the childhood phase when the destruction of the melanocytes is going to begin and where the lesions are going to be described so the classification of vitiligo is going to be in the form of segmental vitiligo focal vitiligo and non-segmental vitiligo in this picture i have shown you the pictures of the segmental vitiligo and also the focal vitiligo whenever you have any question in your props try to draw a small line diagram at least so that examiner will get to know that you are very much aware of the topic which is being asked and tested so number one segmental vitiligo please remember the lesions of the vitiligo are going to be only confined to dermatome single dermatome okay this is one point and because it is going to involve a dermatome the lesions are going to be unilateral unilateral so only either right or left side the lesions are going to be present and one more point you can just write down here itself so this is the example of a stable vitiligo what do you mean by this so once the uh, proper dermatome a single dermatome is going to be involved the vitiligo is going to become stable it will not progress to involve rest of the other body areas one dermatome is involved that's all uh, finish okay it will not spread to other areas it is a stable vitiligo that is one point and now coming to the next variety which is a focal vitiligo where one or two depigmented macules and patches can be present which can involve more than one dermatome so okay one depigmented lesion present here another one here so we categorize the patients as focal vitiligo next we have the non-segmental type of vitiligo where we have various uh, types of vitiligo so first one you can remember acro facial vitiligo acra means the extremities and facial means face will be having the depigmented lesions next is vitiligo vulgaris wherever vulgaris term is there remember it is the most common type of that particular disease so acne vulgaris psoriasis vulgaris pemphigus vulgaris lupus vulgaris you might have heard of all this uh, vulgaris okay so symmetrically distributed bilaterally symmetrically distributed depigmented lesions will be present over the entire body next is mucosal vitiligo very much uh, self explanatory mucosa more than one site of mucosal vitiligo can be noted in these patients next is universal vitiligo remember students there was uh, this king of pop michael jackson who had initially a darker skin but slowly slowly what happened because of the autoimmunity causing damage and destruction to the melanocytes there was small small patches of the white uh, white skin which was initially developing which slowly progressed to become generalized almost involving more than 90 percent of the body surface area because of which this king of pop he developed universal vitiligo 
okay now coming to the description so whenever you have this theory exams please write down the most important points non segmental vitiligo symmetrical depigmented macules this term symmetrical is very important okay and they can be small macules initially but they are going to become enlarged and coalesce to form larger patches typically they will involve the body orifices and any body surface area may be affected hair also can become white where we call it as leukotrichia so you can see here the picture of the leukotrichia i seen the patient is having lesion near the eyebrows and skin is uh, depigmented and you can see the hairs are also becoming depigmented because of the destruction of the melanocytes which are present in the hair follicles and there is uh, this rare variant of vitiligo which is called as vitiligo fulminans in which rapid progression of this depigmentation is going to occur so like segmental vitiligo i have told you it is going to confine to one part of the body and particularly one dermatome of the body and depigmented lesions are associated with normal sensation this is very very important point why because there is one disease which is leprosy and leprosy is going to be associated with hypopigmented lesions hypopigmented lesions but along with this the hypopigmented lesions are going to have reduced sensations reduced sensations okay so this is a very very important leprosy is a very important differential diagnosis dd in the case of the vitiligo in the case of the vitiligo okay so next i hope you might have heard about this investigation woods lamp examination so i have made a video on the woods lamp also so you can check that video i will leave that link in the i cards and also in the description of the comment section so woods lamp examination is going to show the contrast between the depigmented and the pigmented areas over the body and the depigmented area is going to become more uh, uh, more exaggerated on the woods lamp examination so association we have already seen the other autoimmune conditions may be associated with this uh, disease, disease diabetes mellitus pernicious anemia uh, thyroiditis okay these are the important ones for you to remember so this is a wood slump examination where you are able to see this vitiligo lesion it is becoming more prominent it is becoming more and more prominent on the wood slump examination it is becoming more prominent on wood slump examination and here you can see in this picture there is one important phenomenon which is called as Kobner's phenomenon and i have made a very detailed video regarding this I will leave the link for Kobner's phenomenon in the description in the chat and also in the i cards. In the comment section, you can check that out. And if this video was helpful to this point, please do hit that like button and also do share this among your friends. And also, if you are not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe. Okay. So, coming to the management. So, management is very, very tricky in the patients of the vitiligo. Remember, we have to advise the, and give the proper counseling so that they will understand that this is a condition where the proper complete cure is not possible we have to only manage the condition uh, hoping that slowly it becomes stable and it becomes reversed and we have to advise avoiding sun exposure why because uh, this can also traumatize the skin producing the depigmentation and also to uh, you know prevent okay and avoid any unnecessary traumas why because like i have told you coconut phenomenon may be uh, triggered because of this unnecessary trauma okay and uh, sunscreen application should be encouraged because there is a risk of skin cancers because of the treatment which we are going to give and also because of the excessive sunburn because melanin pigment it is a protective age uh, protective and it will prevent any unnecessary skin cancers uh, in normal individuals okay but in vitiligo uh, lesions the melanin pigment is absent so there is a high likelihood they might develop the skin cancer coming to the proper treatment topical treatments what are we going to advise corticosteroids we are going to advise so these are the corticosteroids which are used in limited disease so if there are one or two lesions if the area of the involvement is approximately we can say it, um, which can be managed with the topical agents we can safely use the limited uh, you know corticosteroid topical agents calcineurin inhibitors can also be used like for example tacrolimus especially for the facial lesions we are going to use the tacrolimus because over the face the steroids if they are used it, it might cause unnecessary complications like for example thinning of the facial skin already the facial skin is very thin it becomes more and more thin development of the telangiectasias development of the hair uh, okay so these are all the problems because of which tacrolimus calcineurin inhibitors prefer so phototherapy treatment of any condition dermatological condition with the help of the light ultraviolet rays is called as phototherapy we have two rays so uva and uvb 
so uvb we are going to use a very narrow band and we call it as a narrow band uvb and the wavelength is going to be in the range of 311 plus or minus 2 nanometers whereas in the case of the uva we are going to combine this with the soralin and we call it as puva therapy soralin plus uva therapy and it is used in the refractory cases and usually it is NBUVB which is more preferred over the PUVA therapy and related to this phototherapy also I have made a video I will leave that in the i card and also in the description also in the uh, comment section remember students not only the topical and systemic treatment but also surgery can also be performed in the patients of the vitiligo so this is one thing which many students uh, get uh, you know uh, uh, surprised uh, while looking at split skin grafting blister root graft just just remember grafting is done as a surgical modality for usually the stable lesions okay stay what is a stable lesion for example in the segmental vitiligo if you remember i have called it is a stable vitiligo so in those patients are also in the other types non-segmental uh, type of vitiligo if the condition is stable and it is not increasing in size for more than one year we can perform this surgical treatment they see so in the michael jackson because the condition was, was becoming more and more generalized so there were only few lesion few areas of normal skin which were remaining over the body so in such cases we cannot treat the vitiligo and we cannot reverse the skin color to the previous color so dark color so then what we can do is we are going to destroy the remaining melanocytes which are present with the help of this medication which is called as hydroquinone which is going to achieve the uniformity of the entire skin becoming white white in color and you can just remember a uh, camouflage so some kind of uh, you know makeup uh, we can use okay and uh, melanocyte transplantation in select cases and uh, so just to summarize uh, vitiligo it is a autoimmune condition where the lymphocytes are going to destroy and damage the melanocytes present in the skin because of which there will be some uh, depigmented macules and patches developing uh, and it can also be genetic condition where 20 to 30 percent of the uh, patients may be having a genetic uh, predisposition and remember students this is a uh, this is autoimmune condition and the lesions are going to be seen from the childhood but the lesions of vitiligo will not develop from the birth this is very important point to remember this is an acquired condition not a congenital uh, disorder and there can be other uh, autoimmune condition which can be associated so okay and uh, management is going to be multimodal which can involve mainly the topical steroids calcineurin inhibitors tacrolimus phototherapy and also surgical options are also available early diagnosis and treatment may be very uh, important because we can uh, tell the patients to avoid any unnecessary trauma and take sun protection if we know the diagnosis as vitiligo okay so i hope this video was helpful please do hit that like button if it was helpful and also do revise this topic from the books so these are my sources and also do share this among your friends and try to revise and discuss group uh, discussion will go going to help a lot among your friends try to discuss this and we'll meet in the next video so also check out the other videos i will leave the links for them in the comment section also description thank you so much happy learning uh sarvam sri krishna Pram and sarvechana sukino bhavantu thank you so much and wish you a very 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 happy new year so this is the first video of this particular year